Hey, good morning. It's Patricia Murphy. It's Tuesday. This is Seattle Now. The nation's top doctor says we've turned a corner in the pandemic. A UW epidemiologist we turn to now and then for a reality check says not so fast. We'll talk with Judith Malmgren in a minute. But first, let's get you caught up. SPD didn't break the law or violate department policy when it abandoned the East Precinct during the 2020 protests for racial justice. Monday's findings were from the Office of Police Accountability. Department brass was accused of failing to take responsibility for their respective commands, using improper discretion and unprofessional actions. None of the allegations were sustained by the OPA. In response, SPD wrote that it recognizes its response negatively impacted many people of Seattle and that the turmoil outside the East Precinct led to improvements at the department. There's a new plan for rebuilding Memorial Stadium. The 74-year-old venue is owned by the school district, and it's looking pretty shabby compared to its neighbors at Seattle Center. A deal outlined yesterday would ask voters to pass a property tax to rebuild the stadium, then lease it to the city. From there, the city could raise private money to turn it into a sports and music venue. The district would also get a chance to build a new school in Belltown on city property where the Battery Street Tunnel used to be. And it's time to add another layer or two. The forecast says cooler weather will get here today and stick around all week. We're talking highs in the 50s. National Weather Service says the last time we had a week of below 60 temperatures was late March. So at the very least, it's probably time to stop wearing shorts. The country has now seen 700,000 deaths from COVID, 7,765 here in Washington. Yet the head of the NIH says we might have turned a corner on the Delta surge and hospitalizations and cases are coming down. Let's get a reality check now from Judith Malmgrim, affiliate professor of epidemiology at the UW, also president of HealthStat Consulting. Judith, really good to have you back. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So Dr. Anthony Fauci says we're turning the corner with the latest Delta-driven wave. If people continue to get vaccinated, what are you thinking? Um, I don't know where he's getting his data from because I don't see that. I don't see that anywhere in the United States. There's a couple states where it's gone down a bit, but I'm a statistician and I look at 95% confidence intervals. So that dip could just be random. Mm. I mean, I know what Fauci's talking about because we did see this dip in India and in uh, the UK after the Delta surge. But the United States is like every state is a different country. In Idaho, it's off the charts. Montana is off the charts. And Alaska is in dire straits, really bad in Alaska. And the reason we have to keep our rates low here in King County is because when we get real serious cases in those states, Those people have to be airlifted into King County. You know, it's interesting what I'm hearing you say here, because you're talking about the numbers on one hand, but we're also talking about an emotional shift that happened. We were told things were getting better, Judith. Uh, Yeah, we were. That's kind of magic, isn't it? (laughs) I look at this and I go, God, it looks like COVID's over. Everybody's just out doing their thing. I have friends that just got back from a trip to Idaho and Montana. Nobody's wearing a mask in Idaho or Montana. No masks. I have a friend who lives in Alaska, and they are afraid to go out of their house. You know, like there's one grocery store they go to in Ketchikan that it, where people wear masks, and the other one where people don't wear masks. So the people that are concerned go to the one that has mask wearing. Wow. You know, I feel like we're at this point where we can no longer walk in complete fear of this virus because we have to continue moving forward, right? But I spent the weekend on the train going to the Mariners game. I was double masked that entire time. But when I got to the Mariners game, Judith, oh my gosh, the shouting, no masking. (laughs) I stayed four hours. I'm sorry they lost. It's so sad. But I can't. A friend of mine wanted me to go to the game, but she knew I wouldn't want to be there if people weren't wearing masks because I can't go to a game without constantly eating peanuts, uh, caramel corn, drinking lemonade, ice cream, whatever they bring towards me, I take it. <laughs> and I'm screaming, I'm yelling, and we're talking. So I can't go to a Mariners game. Maybe next year. 
You know, I want to talk about young children because infections are up tenfold in children, according to the Seattle Times for September, compared to July. And even though these are mild cases, that's a lot of potential spread. Yeah, well, we've had that since the beginning, and I'm talking about April 2020. And we've always had a pretty high rate in kids, like 18 to 20 percent in zero to 19 year olds. It's gotten a little better in 12 to 19, depending on what vaccination rates we've got going. But children are excellent spreaders. They get sick. They can get very ill. And we have constant cases in Seattle. We track them on the uh, Seattle Public Schools COVID dashboard. Yeah, Seattle Public Schools reporting 345 cases so far this year after just one month of in-person classes. That's 60,000 students and staff. So put that in perspective. Yeah, it's expected. I think that it's necessary. We have to have schools open because it so disproportionately affects people who have to work. They don't have, can't set up special desks and buy stuff at Office Depot for their kids and put it in the living room with a nice view for the kids to be there or set up another room or go to their house in Montana or wherever and have their kids do remote learning from there like last year. There's kids that whose parents absolutely have to work. So who takes care of the kids? Yeah, yeah. No, it was an untenable situation to not have kids in school. I'm thinking about California right now, Judith, because they just mandated vaccines for children over 12 to attend school. Would that help? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Is that something we should do? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, Newsom was not recalled, so he's taken that as a as a go. He's taken that as a, they flew me up the flagpole and everybody saluted. So I'm going for it. And um, I think that's brilliant um, because what's happening, a lot of the spread is among children and it brings it home to the parents. You know, New Zealand just abandoned its zero COVID agenda. They're stepping back a lot of the restrictions aimed at completely preventing transmission, which was their initial goal. I wonder if we should be paying attention to this because I'm starting to get the sense that the reality is that we're just going to have to figure out how to live with this virus the same way we live with the flu. Uh, Well, the flu doesn't kill as many people. So, um, we are living with it now. It just depends on how much we can live with it. And the problem is, is you hit a you hit a barricade there, and that's when the hospital ICUs fill up. And that's where we're at now. And we have to keep King County needs to keep our ICUs not full. I mean, I've been telling everybody because we got another thing on the horizon here: hospitals are going to be firing people. What? Yes, people that aren't vaccinated. I see. I wish everyone best of luck with your standing by your standards and your personal research, because on your resume, it's going to be fired. It's not going to be laid off. It's going to be fired. And from noncompliance, you're not going to be getting uh, unemployment. And good luck with getting another job, because wherever you go, they're going to look at your resume and you're going to have to tell them, uh, why why are you looking for a job? I got fired because I wouldn't get a shot. I don't know. How's that going to work out? You know, I used to be totally fearful of getting COVID, like fearful, like I'm going to die if I get COVID. And now I don't want to get COVID, but I may not be as afraid as I was before. Well, I think that's legit. That's totally legit. I mean, look at our, our rates. We're almost completely open. There's very few restrictions except for the masks. So the rate of COVID that we have now, and I mostly look at King County because I know how many are vaccinated and all that stuff. I know how much open we are. And the rates aren't too bad. But you go to Skagit County, the hospital's full up in in Anacortes. And people don't understand why they can't do stuff. It's like COVID was over all of a sudden, and nobody got the memo that the hospital was full of COVID patients. So that means if something happens to you, you have a heart attack, you're using a chainsaw and you cut your foot off, whatever happens to you, something serious, you know, there's not going to be any room for you. You know, Judith, you're really driving home the point that we tried to make in the beginning of this is that no one is okay really with COVID until we are all okay. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. 
Judith Malmgren, affiliate professor of epidemiology at the UW, also president of HealthStat Consulting. Always good to have you on. Have a good day. Thanks for listening today. There's more Seattle Now going on over at our Instagram page. Follow us at Seattle Now Pod. Jason Pagano produced today's show. Our production team is Claire McGrain, Diana O'Pong, Jenny Cecil Moore, and Caroline Chamberlain Gomez. Matt Jorgensen does our theme music. I'm Patricia Murphy. 